Hello, welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations and sometimes fun creations. You wait till you see what I have for you this week. So the story on these goes that I saw it one time made, and I don't know, I'm going to speak about this during the video, but I don't know if it was Pinterest or Etsy or there's so many places on the web and you know how it goes. You click one thing, you click another, and before you know it, you're halfway across the internet and you don't know how you got there. So I saw a pillow idea and at the time I needed something for my granddaughter's birthday. And I thought, oh wow, this is perfect, just perfect. And I believe it was a paid pattern, but I'm cheap. <laughs> I admit it. I do like to, uh, <clears throat> I do like to buy patterns when I can afford it. I do like to support artists because seriously, we're all artists. We all deserve to be paid for what we do. So I want to put that right out there right now. But this item was so simple that I knew I didn't need a pattern that I could make it. Well. I didn't really know what it was called, and at the time, I didn't save it either. <laughs> I didn't bookmark it, I didn't pin it. If it was on Pinterest, I didn't save it. But it was up here, and there's there's not a lot of memories up there, but every once in a while, I do remember something. So, are you ready for all this cuteness? Because this is all made with scraps. Every bit of it is scraps. Isn't that sweet? It's a name pillow. It's what I call a name pillow. Now, every letter is different scrap. The background, the gray in behind, is a piece from a fat quarter. I used part of it to make a COVID mask, <laughs> and what I had left is now on Lakin's pillow. And then I've got little scraps and pieces along the edges. And all I did was cut those to two inches by different whatever. Whatever I had for a scrap, I cut it into. The only thing I did was make them two inches wide. It has what's called an envelope back so that you can take the pillow out to wash it. Because if these are for kids, you know they're going to get dirty. And I have to say that I have made a lot of these. I haven't gotten one made for every single one of our grandchildren yet, but it is on the horizon. So Lakin is our new granddaughter that is just about a month away from joining us here in this big old world. And I'm getting things ready for her baby shower and I need to get the box into the mail by tomorrow. And actually should have been in the mail today, but I was a bit busy. So I have all these items that I want to show you on What's Up Wednesday and all these little video tutorials for things that I'm sending down that I haven't been able to show you yet because our daughter watches my channel. So if I would have shown you guys, she wouldn't have had any surprises. And I did like sneak peek some things in there. So uh, she's seen little bits and pieces. And it's funny, one more thing before we get to the supply list is when I was filming the other day, I left some minky fabric over to the side and I thought, oh, nobody will see that. Our daughter won't see that. And it was just a little bit in the camera frame. And I had a subscriber comment and she said, I spy with my little eye some minky fabric. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I thought it was hidden. But her comment made me laugh. I mean, seriously, I just love all you guys and your comments. You, you totally make my day. Thank you for that. Okay, supplies for a name pillow. Okay, scraps. <laughs> no, really, you could use this, you could use yardage and definitely color coordinate everything. I haven't ever done that with one of these, but you could. And you also could put more than one row of the little pieces around there. You could make it as, as large or small as you want. I'm not going to be able to give you exact dimensions for this because 
somebody might be making a pillow for a little girl named Ava who only has three letters. Or maybe your grandson's name is Alexander and you're going to need a long pillow. So I can't tell you measurements, but I do show you the method that I use and I know you will be able to follow it. But if you have any problems whatsoever, my email is in the description box below and you just email me. I'll see if I can help you out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Other than the scraps for the letters, you'll need, of course, a piece to put the letters onto, your little scraps for here, and the two pieces of the backing, which if you have a fat quarter, depending there again on the size of your pillow. And then for the inside, I made a pillow. So for that, you want polyfill or as they say across the pond, wadding. I think that's what they call wadding over in England or Australia. And if I'm wrong, correct me. If I'm right, let me know because <laughs> I would like to know. So you need the scraps for the letters, the scraps for the blocks, a few larger scraps for behind. And for this, you'll need the, I used a, a sheet for my pillow, your polyfill. And I did use a paper called Stitch and Tear. And all it is, is paper that you put behind when you're, it's just paper, that you put behind your letters. Because if you choose to zigzag like I did, uh, and you don't use paper or something behind there, it's, it's going to pucker all over the place. Your, your letters will be all wavy and your fabric will not lay down neatly and you might be disappointed. But I also want to throw in there that just because I used a zigzag stitch around these does not mean that you have to. You could use a straight stitch. But if you notice when you look close up, those zigzag stitches really make those letters pop. That's why I use them. The other thing you're going to want to think about long before you get to the fabric or to placing your letters on there is start thinking ahead on what color you want to outline them with. That was a huge deal for me. I had thought about this deep pink to begin with, but then I thought, well, what if I went with a gray or a black? Oh no, maybe I should do white. I'm telling you, I barely got any sleep because I laid there just... I was just so upset, well not upset, but I just could not choose the color of the thread. Now that's me. One thing I forgot to tell you you'll need is more heat and bond light. Uh, and I will show you that when we get to the sewing table. So you gotta have your scraps for the letters, your scraps, I went over all that. You're going to need to make the pillow insert, so you need a piece of white fabric, sheet, light colored cotton, anything that won't show through your front, your polyfill, your stitch and tear. If you do not have the stitch and tear tear away stabilizer, you could use a sew in lightweight stabilizer. But as I tell you later on, you can also use coffee filters and in a pinch, you can use notebook paper. But I would tell you stitch and tear first, coffee filters second or stabilizer that you buy at the store. And then lastly, if you do not have anything else, use notebook paper, okay? So I wanna thank you guys for coming along today and hanging out with me on this tutorial. I've been so excited to bring this to you. This might not use up a lot of scraps, but once you make one of these and people see them, believe me, you're going to be making a lot of them. So uh, I hope you have fun with this. And it is a longer tutorial, but bear with me. It's not difficult. There are just a lot of steps and I wanted to be thorough and show you everything, okay? So I hope we have fun. I know I'll have fun. I hope you have fun while we're here. And so let's get busy and we'll make some name pillows and you can start gifting them out. Maybe make a head for Christmas. I'll see you over at the sewing table. Okay, before I forget, I did forget something. I forgot to tell you that I will also list in the description box 
where you can find alphabets to use for your name pillows. Now, I went on a scramble today because it's actually been about two weeks since I filmed what you just got done seeing. So I had to find the shirt as well as set up, you know, but either way, so that I could tell you guys a couple of things. And one is that I remembered that I did buy that pattern for the pillow. I did buy it. I bought it from Kimber Bell Designs, and I will put a link in the description box. It's now only $6, which if I remember correctly, I paid more than that for it. Um, and I will just mention about my memory is I have a terrible memory. I took a really bad fall back in the early to mid nineties and I bumped the back of my head and neck really bad. So uh, as time goes on, my memory gets worse and worse. So I find I have to write everything down and I forget things like that, like buying the pillow. Either way, we won't dwell on that. <laughs> I forgot, I'm fessing up. So there will be a paid version as well as a free version. If you use the link to the free letters, and they are cute, you'll find that you have to scroll down the web page just a little bit, and each letter will be listed individually, which I think is good because then if you just need, you know, four or five letters, you don't have to print the whole alphabet. You just print one page and it will give you the capital and the little letter. So if you want to go with that way, that's fine. Also, later on in the video, I mentioned that this would make a great Mother's Day gift or Father's Day gift or whatever. So in the time since I filmed that, I thought it was a great idea too. So what do you think of that? Isn't that sweet? We all need something for Mother's Day, whether it's for our mom, for our daughters, for our niece, whoever. Everybody needs a Mother's Day gift, right? This would be perfect. I hope you like my ideas and I hope you like today's video. I'm going to use a product today called Heat and Bond Light. Okay, you want to make sure it says light. There is another one, I think it's in a blue package instead of this color, and it is heavy and it will not work for this project. You can't sew through it and it's very stiff. So you wanna make sure you get the heat and bond light, okay? Now this also comes in little flat packages. Some stores you can buy it by the yard. I think our local Walmart sells it in a package and by the yard. I bought this online because I use a lot of it, so I bought quite a large amount. There are two sides to this. There's a scratchy side. Let's see if I can show you that's very textured. Um, I don't know if it's gonna show up, but it's textured. I guess you can see a little bit of the shiny, whereas the other side is just paper, okay? It's just like drawing paper. So you want your paper side up and then your letters, okay? You want them to go down in mirror image, okay? So I'm going to spell, I'm gonna show you the way it's going to look when it's done. It's going to look like that when I have the letters done, but for now, I need to turn them the opposite way around, okay? So the E is backwards, the A, everything is backwards as to how it's going to be when, when we get it, okay? So I'm not trying to be confusing, but you have to think in mirror image, okay? So what we're going to do is we have these down and you want to leave a little bit of space in between these okay so you're going to trace around all the letters that you've cut out you're going to go around and trace them all out okay and when you've traced them all out you come back here i'm going to show you what's next so i've traced around all my letters backwards or mirror image you see, 
Now I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm not using my good sewing scissors. These are kitchen shears. You could use an old pair of scissors, whatever you have. The one thing you don't want to do at this point is you don't want to cut out on your drawn lines. And I meant to mention on that you can use a pencil or a pen. I have had one type of pen get onto my iron one time, so I never used another pen, but I don't know if it was a marker pen or, or what it was, but something happened that, that didn't work out very well for me. Okay. So you see how I've left some space around the letters, okay? So that's what we're going to do. On these name pillows, you could do them any number of ways. You could make them all in one fabric, you know, each letter being its own fabric or use the same fabric for all the letters. What I like to do is put down a background fabric and this is what I'm using for this one the light is making it look really dark but it's just a little gray fabric with bears and stars and because the nursery theme is pink and gray and kind of wildlife I thought this would be a good one to use so what's going to happen is the letters are going to go on here but before we get to that point we have to make our letters and this is the fun part i wouldn't tell you if it wasn't fun all right let's see what we have so you're going to need your iron let's move this nifty little ironing board that my husband made for me into view so first off, I grab some scraps because you know that's what we're working with. We're working with scraps. I have five letters in her name, and these are the five I chose because this one here has all these colors in it. That's pretty close to that. It's as close as I could come because we're working with scraps there again, okay? I better get the rest of these cut out so I can show you what we're going to do. But I bet you've guessed what we're going to do because you're on the ball. I have confidence in you. You know what we're doing. I'll tell you, I have made so many of these name pillows. They make a great gift, whether it's for birthday, Christmas. This time it's going to be kind of a welcome to the world, baby, kind of gift. All right. So the first thing I want to do, because I'm using five different fabrics, is I have to figure out which ones I want first. You know, like which ones go for the L or which ones go. So I want to break the pinks up throughout there. So I'm going to fold this up a little bit. And this one's my favorite pink. <laughs> okay. So this probably should be towards the middle because this is going to be our focal point. So if I put a pink on each edge and that in the middle, it just leaves these two. And I'm not going to get really picky. I, I really, I think this is going to work. What do you think? I like that layout. Okay, so this is going to be the L. I'm going to stack these in the order that I'm going to use them. I have my little iron, no steam, and I have it on medium heat. Okay, Flip your fabric over to the wrong side. I always make sure it's kind of ironed. It doesn't have to be hot, but you don't really want any wrinkles in there. Oh, look, that's going to fit on there perfectly. Of course, if you needed to, see, I could trim a little closer and have that be. But anyway, we don't want to make too many more pieces of scraps, do we? Ha, 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 we love scraps. Okay, so I'm going to hold this on, and I'm going to start the iron, and it just takes a couple of seconds. That's all we're doing, a couple of seconds. And see, that didn't come off. 
See, there's no lead from the pencil on my iron. That's perfect, okay? So we're going to set that aside. There's our L. And I always like to conserve as much fabric as is possible. So this is going to be the A. Oh, this is a good time to mention, just be thinking of this. If you have a directional fabric, you want to make sure that your letter is going in the correct direction for that. And I guess I could trim these out. Boy, those are really dull. <laughs> They're definitely not my sewing scissors. Are you picky about your sewing scissors like I am? Now, between my husband and I, we had eight children. And, yeah, <laughs> when we met, we had two teenagers. He had two teens at the time, and we had six children under the age of eight. So, yeah, <laughs> busy times, great times, but very busy. <laughs> I don't remember where, oh, I remember where I was going, is... <laughs> I had a really hard time trying to keep a pair of scissors because the kids would take off with them. And, you know, I I bought, my husband bought me a really nice pair, my first pair of uh, Fiskars one year, and I believe it was for Christmas. And they didn't even last me a year because they were used to cut wire on someone's car. They were used to... Oh, what was it? One of the kids cut their boots. Yeah, their rubber rain boots. I can't even remember why, but they did. <laughs> and they used my scissors to do it. Okay, let's just say now that they're grown, I miss them all terribly, but I do have sharp scissors in the house. <laughs> all right. Here's our E. And you want to use the corners of your fabric so you conserve. You don't want to waste fabric. We can't waste fabric, can we? But we can cut it so that we have more scraps because you know we all love our scraps. One more letter to go. That's kind of wrinkly. Not too bad. And if I didn't mention it before, you don't want to have steam. So I don't have any water in my little iron. A cat hair. I occasionally find them. Uh, anybody with a cat knows that is it's impossible to keep cat hair out of your sewing area. No matter how much I try to keep her out. Her name is Jack and I know we have <laughs> a name issue there. We have a female cat with kind of a male name but there's a reason for that. When we first got her, and she was a stray, we didn't look to see if she was male or female, but we were told that she was a he, and we just, you know, went with that. We got the appointment to get her fixed, <laughs> sent her in, and they said, well, she, or he is a she, so... <laughs> There's that. And I thought of changing her name to Jackie, but you know what? She knows her name. It's Jack. It doesn't matter. That, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't even. Okay. So this is what the letters are going to be cut out of. You could continue to use your paper scissors and most people would. These are not my best sewing scissors. These are actually about 20 or 25 years old. They're not quite as dull as these. So I'm going to use them for this. Now is when we cut on our line, all right? So you're going to go in and cut your letters directly on your lines. Because we need that. These are like an iron-on patch at this point. Have you ever purchased, you know, before you knew better, you, those uh, uh, denim, or what do they call them? The denim iron-on patches, you're supposed to be able to fix your jeans, and it, it shows, you know, oh, it's so easy, you just take these and you iron them on, and it will show like a kid who's, you know, blown the knee out of their jeans, and oh, their mama has fixed it right up. Well, those things don't last. 
they don't work but what they do is they you you iron them on and you're going to iron these on in the same way that you iron on those so if you've ever used one you know before you learned your lesson that they don't stay stuck i mean they do if you sew around them after you iron them on the jeans they do stick but they're mostly the stick is there just for placement but we're doing the same thing right here we're making the same thing okay so i'm not going to bore you by having you watch me cut these all out i'm going to cut them out and i'm going to come back the only thing i want to add is you're probably wondering what i'm going to do for these centers because i'm using scissors so there are a few ways you could go you could fold it in half and get in there this way like that or you could use an exacto knife which is what i'm going to do or a razor blade but i would warn you because you know i'm a mom and we warn people be very careful if you use a razor blade you know just be really careful but anyway exacto knife razor blade scissors whatever you use cut those out and then just run just run 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 right back here and we'll go to the next step okay i'm back now i have my piece of fabric that the letters are going to be placed on now here's where things change because we're all putting on different names where there are a different number of letters and so on and so forth so mine measures just about 16 inches by six and a half six and three quarters i wish it were wider this way a little bit uh, and I'll show you in a minute, but this is still going to work because we're going to have fabric scraps around it So I'm going to show you the different ways you can do this now. You can simply We're, we're just going to see where they go here You could put them in a straight line. You could put your ruler Underneath and figure out front, you know the top and the bottom so that they have the same amount of space i don't happen to do it that way i think i've only ever made one of these name pillows that was straight you know similar to this because i'm going to show you what i like to do i like to make it kind of fun so see i i do kind of this where i i tilt them a little bit and when I get them where I want them, that's when you iron them on. So the first thing I'm going to do now is peel the backs off these, which always takes me a minute, even with fingernails. And you don't have to worry about these. They're not going to stick to anything just yet. I mean, they're kind of like a, they have like some static cling to them, but you don't have to worry about placing them down and then them not sticking because they will stick you could move these around quite a few times i've used heat and bond a lot oh this is the other thing i wanted to show you you see in my center let me see if i can show you you see there my my little blade was dull but you don't need to worry about that because we're going to be zigzag stitching over this and it's never going to show so you can get away with a lot of little tiny boo-boos that are never going to show. And here's where you want to be thinking ahead. Excuse me. I had one of my videos that was exporting to a file and I heard my voice and I was like, what am I, what's going on here? Well, it was done exporting and it starts to automatically play. <laughs> I've got a couple of little threads here and there that I must have missed in the corners. Snip those off there. And I'm not placing these letters where they're going to be. I'm just placing them in the order. 
Anyway, as I was starting to say before I so rudely interrupted myself on the video, <laughs> now is where you want to be thinking ahead to your thread color. And that's for going around the outside you're go of each letter. You're going to choose a color that you feel complements your pillow. So you could use one color and use throughout one that will go with everything. You could use a different color on each that either coordinates or not. Uh, that's totally up to you. I thought maybe of using a pink or a gray. I'm not sure which. I want to get these and you have to remember you've got to have your seam allowance so don't get it so close like that you don't want it to be too close to the end because even if I had it say over here okay by the time that pillow gets stuffed you're, you're gonna it's gonna turn a little bit so don't get too close to your edge there uh, but yeah this is where I start thinking hmm I wonder what color I want to use for my thread and I, I really honestly at this point am still undecided on this. I don't know which I want to do. I've got to figure out how I want this. What do you think of that? that looks, see it looks kind of whimsical and cute when they're when they're uh, not all straight. I, I think it's adorable. I've even done them like this. Like, oops, let's see. Kind of all messed up. Kind of like this. And sometimes they're just so cute. It really depends. Sometimes I think it matters, like your fabric choices. I think some look better one way than another. But you're going to find whatever you think looks good. And when you get it where you want it, and I'm pretty close to that. Because I don't want it to be like one way or the other, one way or the other, and have it be a pattern, so to speak. But I've got to make a choice here because you guys are going to be wondering what comes next and I'm still going to be over here trying to decide how I want these to go. I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to be brave. So here's my iron. Same thing. No steam. Medium heat. And you're just going to hold it down for a few seconds. Go to the next one. The next one. I hope I'm happy with my choice because, you know. Now, that brings up a thought that you might ask me. You might say, Marie, what if I messed up? What if I did what you did the first time you made these and you got the letters in the incorrect order? And yes, I really did that. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes you get confused and, you know, or interrupted when you're in the middle of something and you might get something wrong. So how would you fix that if you got the letters in the wrong order? I'll tell you how. You simply hold, let, let it cool, hold your iron over it with some steam, get it nice and hot and you can peel that back up okay because it does happen mistakes happen okay. so this here is a piece of what's called stitch and tear and it's a stabilizer that's just paper that's all it is it's paper uh and it i place it behind what i'm going to be it's for embroidery so whatever I'm going to be machine embroidering, I place it behind there. And what it does is it just basically stabilizes so that uh, 
as you're sewing along and zigzagging, there's a lot of stitches in a small area and that can cause your fabric to pucker and you don't want that. You've gone through a lot of work and a lot of time and you want, you want it to look as good as you can possibly make it. So you say, well, Marie, what happens if I don't have any stitch and tear stabilizer? Hmm. I've been there too. Uh, so there are a few choices. I'm sure you could Google it and find many more than what I know of, which is I have used just regular computer paper, typing paper, notebook paper. I have used that. It, the results are okay, but I'll tell you what works even better is a coffee filter. Now I don't drink coffee, so I don't pretend to have a lot of those, but there's something that you can buy really cheaply. I think you can get them at the dollar store. You could place your, your filters in behind and pin them in place because this is all I do. I pin these just to hold it straight. I make sure everything's smooth and I just pin it here and there to hold it on to the paper. Oh, I know another one that I read about is if you have uh, parchment paper, like for baking, you know that parchment paper that's, it's like wax paper only without the wax, and you put it on a baking pan so that your cookies don't stick, that would work. That would work. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to try to get as good of an angle as I can, and I'm going to show you how we're going to make our stitches around, because you want them fairly close together. You want a pretty tight zigzag stitch. Now, do you need it? No. You could simply straight stitch on here all the way around. You wouldn't even need your paper if you did that. Uh, if you zigzag, you definitely need some kind of stabilizer behind there. And there are fusible or non-sewing fabric stabilizers you could get. And I'm sure that they would probably help, but I don't have any personal uh, first-hand knowledge about using them for this purpose. So the only ones that I know are this one notebook paper and coffee filters. And they all worked with varying degrees of... Oh, how shall I put it? I was I was happier with the coffee filters than I was with the notebook paper. All right, so next we're going to meet at the sewing machine. So when you get caught up to here, keep the video going. If you're not at this point, pause it and you can catch up. I hope that my camera angle is okay and that you're able to see. I put on uh, an embroidery foot which is just an open toe foot. I have done these with my regular sewing foot being, should have that out. I've used this foot before. As long as you can see where your stitches are going, you're okay. This open toe foot just gives me more visibility, so that's why I like to use it. Oops. Okay, so let's get started. My The biggest decision I had in making this was I didn't know what color I wanted to use. I didn't know if I wanted to use dark pink on this and white on this. and I just really wasn't sure, but I, I decided I wanted to go with one color, so then there was that decision. So I'm going with the dark pink. So what I'm going to do first, I always lower my needle. I center my letter right in between the middle of my presser foot and I hand crank one stitch. I pull that thread up, that's your bobbin, and then place it behind you. Okay, and that helps so that it doesn't get all fouled up at the beginning. You know how sometimes it will, not really bird's nest, but it will make a little bit. We're going to go around this letter, and I'm not going to stitch the whole thing and bore you, but I do want to show you a few things. When you get to an intersection like this, I make sure my needle is on the right side, okay, and I leave it in the down position. 
and I turn. And here I'm going to go back a couple of stitches because I want it to line up with my other, with my line coming down. So every time you do a curve or a turn, you're going to leave your needle in the down position to, to make that turn. And watch out for your pins. I only have a few pins, but you want to watch out for that. We're going to go around all of our letters just like this. All right, I have finished going all the way around this. I hope I have it in the camera frame here so you can see. I think the dark pink was a good choice. What do you think? I think it looks really good. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next step over at the, the craft table, the sewing table. I'll meet you over there. All right, so I have assembled two inch wide strips of fabric by varying widths. I didn't measure, other than the two inches going this way, I didn't measure side to side. I want them to be different. And I chose, as you can see, all the colors that are in the pillow, okay? So what we're doing is we're going to sew these together. I'll pick a better one than that. We're going to sew these on the two inch wide sections. Put right sides together, use a quarter inch seam allowance, and sew strips together. So you're going to sew strips that go across the top of your pillow. Because we're going to put them on the side and on the top and bottom. So we're gonna sew together strips and then I'll meet you back here. Here we are. So I have sewn my strips together and I'll show you those in just a moment. But for now, we still have our paper on the back as well as we need to take an iron to press the top. So while I'm waiting for the iron to heat up, I'm going to show you if you use the uh, stitch and tear, it is just that easy. You just tear it off the back. It comes off very easily. It's been a long time since I used a coffee filter for this, so I don't remember tearing it off, but I'm pretty sure that it came off really easily, too. Um, this stitch and tear, I found it one day when I was at Walmart about six or seven years ago, and I thought, hmm, I wonder what that's for. And I asked the lady that was cutting at the desk, and she was really helpful, and she said that, People use it for machine embroidery. Well, I, at that point, I had never done anything like machine embroidery, but I thought, hmm, 
I don't know if you like me, but if you see something new and you're a sewer and people use it to sew, sometimes curiosity gets the better of me. So I buy it and then I have yet something else to try and, you know, sometimes I like it. Like this, I love making these name pillows. I have made quite a few of them. And that being said, we have 15 grandchildren. I have not yet made it through all the grandchildren, but I will. Some I'm saving as, uh, I want to do it for a special occasion. Some I did make, not that a birthday isn't a special occasion, but sometimes you've got some that you want to make it extra special for and and that's kind of what I'm doing okay so if you notice there it's not really a lot of ripples but you do get a little bit from using all those tight stitches okay so I'm going to turn the steam on about halfway and I have my iron on the linen setting which is just a bit hotter than cotton this is the first iron I've ever had that had that uh, setting, the linen. And I wasn't lifting it up a lot, but I was lifting in between it. You don't want to do this. Do not do this. If you missed my What's Up Wednesday from a few weeks, yeah, I tell you to do that, and then I just go do it. If, if you saw my What's Up Wednesday from a few weeks ago, I showed you how if you use steam and you go back and forth like this, like you were pressing a shirt, your fabric's going to be all wonky, and you don't want that. It will stretch your cotton. So there is a difference between pressing and ironing, and I want you to just press. And I've done more than what I needed to do, but as you can see, it flattened it out nicely. The back looks neat. I don't have any problem with that. Not that anybody's going to see the back because we're making a pillow out of this. Okay, so I sewed strips. Let's see what we have here. I can't remember which one I wanted on which side. Oh, I know what it was. When I first put these together, I thought this one for this side and this one for this side now these are varying lengths so it doesn't matter if i move this all the way up and just used a little bit of this or if i move it down towards here but i have this dark pink here so and i have quite a bit of pink in there maybe i'm overthinking it so this was my second choice of course was moving it one more to the side but then there's a lot of pink over here too so you know what i'm really overthinking this and i know i am so i'm simply going to put right sides together oh you know what i forgot see i don't edit out mistakes because we all make mistakes so i feel it's important to leave these in here and i'm going to show you what i almost did i forgot to square this up because we've been sewing so of course it's going to get a little out of shape and we want it to be nice and even and it might be fine we don't know let's see there's really not that much to take off but I am Now I'm going to lay it against one of the marks on my cutting mat, which I think I'm going to invest in a, a new cutting mat. As much as I hate to, because the price is really kind of up there, and I'd rather spend money on fabric. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Okay, so I have approximately one inch between the top of the L and the bottom, so I probably should go just about the same on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm going to like make a, put the one inch of this ruler at the bottom of the L and then I'm going to notice where it is here and I'm going to make sure, because I'm not really using my mat so much as I'm using the ruler 
to straighten out. And it doesn't need to be one exact measurement. Like it doesn't need to be on a one half or a three quarter. This is a pillow. I don't think that the recipient will sit and measure and go, oh my land. Look, they didn't measure that exactly right. Okay, so this is going to, if I don't slip and move it, measure about six and a quarter on mine. Now yours will be different. You would expect it to be because you're using different lettering, different widths as far as that goes. I'm going to leave a little bit more on the sides. And I do that because it seems like when I fill these, the, the side kind of goes over a little bit. I'll show you that in a bit, but I'm going to go with one and a quarter inches from the edge. So I'm lining this up on the straightaway on my ruler and I will, I've gone with the corner of the L at the one and a quarter mark. I'm going to cut that. Does anybody else have their rotary cutter that just loosens? I mean, I know this isn't brand new, but I am not stretching it a bit when I say probably every 10 or 12 cuts, the blade is all wobbly on me. So I did contact Fiskars because I know they have great customer service. And you can't call them right now because of COVID. That's what their website says, which I don't understand what one has to do with the other, but that's just me. Uh, so I emailed them, but that's been a while. I told them what happened because I had a pair of scissors one time. And I will say right off the bat, I would buy their product over anything else. And they don't pay me to say that. They don't, but from my very first pair of Fiskar scissors, I have been hooked. And I have tried other brands, but I love their product, just love it. So anyway, I had, I think it was a pair of scissors and they were the spring action where when you squeeze it and you let go, they come back. Let me see, I have some. Let's see, I have more than one pair because I love them. The safety pin means it's my newer pair. Anyway, these are spring action. So you pull back on this little thing and it opens your scissors. So when you squeeze, see? So there's less hand motion when you're cutting. I was gonna say when you're scissoring. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's get back to this. Anyway, so when, when my spring quit working, it just didn't work right or something happened. I emailed them and you know what they did? They sent me two brand new pairs of scissors. I believe it was scissors. Uh, yeah, it was, you know what it was? It was those little snippy ones. Uh, these, and you can tell these are older because of the color, because their new color is, is now this, but these are for making rag quilts. And my mom had bought me a pair and oh boy, did that make a difference. Cause with rag quilt, you're doing a lot of snip, snip, snip around the edges. Anyway, it was a great company to deal with as far as returns and that was just perfect. Okay, enough chattering about that. I'm going to lay these out and see how I want them. And I didn't sew these together in any particular order other than the sides. I did want to get some of the main colors from here in the sides just to make sure. I don't really know why I did that, but I did. And the only other thing I'm watching is that I have some fabric that is directional. And that's the only one. It says like sleepy time, cutie, you know, this and that. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Place these right sides together where I want them. I'm going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance with a 2.0. What do I want? I love this fabric. It's like, uh, it has words in French. Not that I can read French or speak or anything, but 
I bought that to make something for a friend of mine and I love that fabric the pinks and the grays and so it goes with all this so anyway I think I want to show a lot of that little birdie because it's the same color as the owls and such in there so I think it will show or should show up well so what I'm going to do with that is show more of that so I'm going to put that right up towards the top And you're just lining your edges up, keeping everything even. Oh, I take that back. I don't want there to be that little bit of that. I'm going to have to bring that back a little bit. But, you know, every piece of fabric that went around the outside of this pillow and every letter on it was a scrap. Even this was a scrap. This was the only piece of fabric I had. And I don't remember just now if I cut this on camera or not, but it wasn't much bigger than this. It was maybe a half an inch bigger than what is showing right there. So everything here is made from a scrap, which is our whole deal. We're using up our scraps. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew that with a one quarter inch seam allowance, 2.0 millimeter stitch length, and I will see you back here in just one second okay I sewed these sides and it's okay that they're longer right now that's fine we're gonna deal with that in just a moment so right now we're going to press these we're gonna press our seams okay so the first thing is to set our seams I saw this done on a video many times before I ever tried it I didn't know what they meant by setting your seam and I to this day don't know if it really helps but I do it because someone out there must know more about it than I do I have been pressing all my seams open you may have noticed that some people press to one side some people press them open and I know that most of the time quilters do not press open but I do I found that the majority of the time I feel I get a neater result okay. so I pressed it to one side to make a crease and now I'm going to finger press it open just so it stays I'm gonna have my steam on just a little bit and I'm gonna hold this there I don't know why I keep saying gonna I know it's going to, but you know, I've gotten so slang type talking recently and I catch myself doing it and I do know proper English, but I don't know what it is. Just let myself go with age, I guess. You're just going to have to deal with me. If you guys haven't seen this, my son gifted me this Taylor's Clapper. He gifted me two. This was made of ash. And this one was made of poplar and they're both beautiful in their own way um, the poplar was almost oh you can see like the little tiny bits of grain and the color changes and it's beautiful and it's just a wee bit lighter than the ash but the thing I like about the ash is you get to see more of the wood grain and I love that knot. And the first thing he said when he brought it over is, Mom, I'm sorry there's a knot right there. And I'm like, oh, no, I love that. It gives it character. So if you've never used one, what you do is you press or iron your piece. And especially if you have steam, you hold that on there. I actually was holding too long, but uh, it makes for a beautiful crease. I know you didn't see me using it here, but look how nicely those seams lay down there. They're beautiful. Uh, that's another thing that I saw on YouTube. I saw someone using it, and I didn't know what a clapper was. I had no idea what a clapper was, or if I needed one, if they really worked, if I'd ever use it. And my son does woodworking. Uh, my husband always did it. He grew up seeing it. Uh, although he does a different type of woodworking, you know, the interest has always been there. So he approached me one time, not too long ago, and he asked me if I would use a tailor's clapper. And I said, well, 
sure, Jake, I'd, I'd try one. Because I thought, you know, eh, I'll try it, give it a shot, see if I like it. Well, he brought me these two, and I had already planned to do just a little bit of ironing tips and hints for the, the following What's Up Wednesday, after he gave them to me. So I thought, well, I'll try it out then, you know. So I did try it out a couple of times before the video just to see if I liked it, make sure I knew how to use it. I mean, how many ways can you use a block of wood, right? I was amazed. Like, I, I couldn't get over how good the pleats were or the seams were. So if you have one, you know what I'm talking about. They're wonderful. All right, enough about that. Let's go onward. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move my little ironing board. And I am going to straighten those edges out, if I don't trip on things. Let's see what we have here. I'm just going to use the gray as a guide. Trim those off. Those are even, those little pieces were too small for the scrap pile because I save almost anything. But it does have to be one inch or larger, or I don't s save it even for the crumbs. Well, no, I take that back. I do. <laughs> I save it for postcards, so I would save both of those pieces. Because at first I saw that one and I thought, oh, I wouldn't save that. And I'm like, yeah, actually, I would. <laughs> okay, now we have this. We're almost done with the top. So I want to look and see if these are where I want them to be, because I could switch them out. Um, and I know I'm getting picky here, but I just noticed something. Um, you see what I'm looking at, don't you? Is this. Hmm. And the only other way to change that would be for me to go upside down and then the letters would be upside down on the words. But I don't like it that it was corresponding that way. But it doesn't matter whether I put it top or bottom, it's going to do that. So let's see which way I want it. I think I want it underneath. Of course, I could take my seam ripper, take that one piece out, put something else on there, and then I could move it around. And you know what? If I don't do that, it's going to bug me. So you hold on. I'm going to do that. Alrighty. <laughs> so I changed it around a little bit. The green is still on there, but I added something to each end so that if I wanted to put it either direction, top or bottom. No, I actually want to throw the camera around. You see that? I'm moving you guys all over the place. All right. So I think I still want this on top. I'm not going to worry about things like this. Now, years ago, I would have made sure that that matched up. But this is all scraps. Our point is not to make it look perfect. It's to make it look whimsical and cute. That's why I didn't line up my letters. So we're not going to worry about that. I think I'm going to bring it over a little bit. Hmm. Like that. Because I want some of that pink here to be on there. I mean, I could put it upside down. To how I had it which would be this way but then there's a lot of pink and see I'm overthinking again so I'm gonna go with it we're gonna go this way which was my first thought and I'm going to pin that down right sides together but for the moment I'm just gonna hold that enough so that it's out of my way and I'll come back and pin that before I sew it oops I better leave this like this make sure that I have my wording or any other directional fabric you may have, you want to make sure it's going in the right direction. And I'm making it a point to not line up any seams. I mean, I could, but if I lined it up on one edge, it's not lined up on the other. And there again, that's not what we're going for. So I'm going to leave that about like that. So I will flip it. 
the only thing I do is I make sure that it extends past the edge because you want to give yourself a little bit of room so I'm going to pin this across and then I'm going to sew it again with a 1 quarter inch seam allowance 2.0 stitch length but you do whatever you're comfortable with and then I'll meet you back here and show you what we have I'm back okay this is really taking shape I'm going to press my seams to set them and I'm going to make sure that these stay flat like back here because when I was moving them around and sewing on top they kind of moved a little bit so first I always press in one direction and again, I'm using a very hot iron. It's use cotton or linen, whichever is your hottest. And that's if you're using cotton fabric. If you're using a blend, definitely do not use anything hotter. Now I'm going to press it open. feels funny to be able to do this. Normally I don't have any fingernails to do this with. And <laughs> I'll see uh, sewers on YouTube and they'll say, finger press them open. And I know sometimes you can use the tips of your fingers, but my skin is so dry. If I were to run it over the tip of the fabric, I would have blood on it because I have a very, very dry skin. I'm going to use a little bit more steam. Let that hold on there for a minute. Now, I wanted to throw this in here. I don't, I haven't decided 100%. Oh, wow, look at that. I haven't decided 100% how I want to finish this pillow. Because there have been times where I have done it just like this, made my pillow out of it because this is just the pillow top we're going to make a pillow to go inside of it and the reason for that is you want it to be washable uh, if you make it just and, and stuff this then you'd have to wash the whole thing and then it would be lumpy and bumpy and yeah we don't want that but anyway I thought about putting a piece of cotton batting underneath here and then quilting around but because this needs to go in the mail today <laughs> I'm gonna do it how going to do it how I've always done them which is to just leave the fabric and make the pillow out of it without any batting behind there there will be polyfill inside the pillow just like you would expect there to be I really like the colors in this and it's such a great decoration for the baby's room and then when she's older I'm sure she'll like that she has a pillow with her name on it because kids love that stuff they really do heck there's a lot of adults that love that stuff let alone the kids I'm not even gonna finger press that this time I'm just going to press it just like this. Hold that steam on there. And I guess these clappers absorb the moisture, which is a good thing. And that is, I guess, how they work to help set, you know, get that crease in there that you want is they pull the moisture out that the steam put into it. So, as you can guess, the next thing we're going to do is even our edges that we have with our quilting ruler. I'm going to shut off my iron or else I will forget and it will beep at me later on in the tutorial. So I'm going to match a line up going across line it with my edge and I'm going to make sure that this is even trim that 
up. Same thing again. Make myself a line going across. Grab the edge. Make sure that this is even. Make a few more scraps. <laughs> So this is what we have at this point, and isn't that adorable? And it could be done in so many different colors. I've made these in a lot of different colors. I've made them that had two rows of quilting or of uh, scrap blocks. Uh, you could do any number of things. You could actually just do one solid color. You could do all the letters with one fabric. There are just so many variations you could use on this. And I saw this somewhere done, I want to say it was on Pinterest or Etsy, and I think it was a paid pattern, but there are so many alphabets out there on the internet for free, I thought I could make that. So I don't even know what the original pattern was called, because I would like to be able to give that creator the credit, but I, I just don't remember where I saw it. But I've used it a lot since then, and I would love to give, give credit where credit is due, but I don't remember. Okay, uh, I'm going to gather the fabrics and materials for the next section, and we'll go on to that. Okay, here we go to the next part of our pillow, and I can't stop looking at this. I just think this is adorable, and I realize that it's going to be fairly big for a baby, but... It's decoration for now, and like I said earlier, the child will have it in their room later on. So right now it measures 18 by 9 and a quarter, but it will measure a little less than that because we're going to be sewing. So some of this will get cut off. Okay, next part. I, as you know by the name of my channel, Scrappy Scrappy, I save everything and I love a good bargain. So if I go to a yard sale and I see something I like, I grab it. Now this was about four years ago. My friend and I went to a yard sale in the name neighboring town and there was an elderly couple that were selling a lot of items and I know that when I see elderly people cleaning out their home to move into a smaller place, there's usually some good deals. And sure enough, I found cotton sheets from the 60s. And I could tell that because they looked like the sheets my mom had when I was a little kid. So either way, good quality. This, this is one of them. This was a little bit thinner than the other ones, but I use these sheets for all sorts of things and one of them is making my pillows so what we're going to do now I think what we should do first is cut the fabric for our backing okay so you could if you don't have white or off-white it's not a deal breaker I have made the pillows the pillow inserts, I'm trying to clarify which is which, because we have a pillow going inside the pillow. This is actually going to be a case for it, although it's not made like a regular pillow case. Anyway, I have made the pillow inserts out of regular cotton fabric, printed fabric. As long as it's a light enough color that it doesn't show through any of your, your lighter fabrics, you're good to go. Okay, so don't worry if you don't have white. Okay, so let's see. I hope this is big enough. Oh my land, this should be big enough. I'm going to fold this piece of fabric in half. And I'm going to lay this on top. Oh yeah, okay, let's save a little bit of that. As you know me, I need more scraps. Maybe. So, let's trim this out. You don't have to be really particular on this part, because we're going to be trimming it up later. Oh, look, a nice scrappy strip for later. We'll use that, won't we? You want, you know, 
know, a little bit of leeway here. I think I left myself about three quarters of an inch. It's more than enough. But I'd rather have too much than too little. And I don't like to waste fabric because I can't afford to buy a lot of fabric. So what I buy has to fit into our budget. And so that's one of the reasons that I use scraps. Of course, the main reason I use scraps is I absolutely love how they look. All right, we're going to have pieces left over from the pink here too, okay? Because of the way we're doing the back. All righty. Now, when I do the backs with these, what I call an envelope, I think that's what they call them, an envelope backing, I don't measure, okay? I eyeball, and I think it's because for so many years, I mean, for any of you who are my age, you, you know, we didn't always have the internet. And when I learned to quilt, I learned from a book, one book. I took out from the library. It was called Let's Make a Patchwork Quilt. And I learned a lot from that book. But either way around it, we had to figure things out on our own. What worked, what didn't. We couldn't always Google things. All right. I have the wrong side facing. Okay. Wrong side up. And I'm going to fold that over. And no, I'm not measuring. You want it to be even. And if you feel like uh, you can't do that evenly. You can certainly measure it. Okay, you see what I did? I just folded it over. And I'm going to fold it over again by the same width. And you could do this narrower. You certainly could do it narrower. If you're wondering what I just sprayed on, I forgot to show you. And I will do that. I use sizing and this does help it says clothes look new longer superior dry cleaning results odor eliminating but I don't use it for any of those I use it because it helps me get a nice crease as well as it holds the fabric pretty well so instead of being as uh, pliable or whatever the word would be it gives a little bit of stiffness kind of like when you first buy um, a piece of fabric so you buy a yard of fabric you know how it has that crispness to it and you like that because it's got more body well that's what this does and I would suppose that spray starch would do the same thing uh, this just makes it easier to iron let's see what it's if it says anything else um, Sizing helps restore light body to the fabric. It makes ironing faster and easier while imparting a freshly laundered scent. Yeah, I know. They're selling it, but you know. Okay. And I always, if you missed my other video on ironing from a few weeks ago, I'll link it down below. But one of the things that I talked about was when you spray this, so I'm going to do it again. When you spray it, don't immediately, like don't have your iron right there. Let it set into it for a couple of seconds, and that is whether you're using starch or sizing. And that's because if you immediately put your iron down, it will stick to your iron. And yeah, you can peel it off, but you know, it takes time away from your sewing, and we all want more time to sew, correct? So... Boy, this fold is really nice. It really is, especially with the sizing. Um, it makes for a better hold. Okay. While I have you right here, I'm going to show you that I'm going to use one of my tags. And I don't always put tags in everything, but I do use them in my my bags a lot like my zippered bags but I have to fold them in half and 
like this. My name is a little close down there to the fold, but it works out all right. I guess I should center it. And uh, these are kind of a silky feeling fabric. So these ones show the sewing machine and my first and last name, and then these ones just say Handmade by Marie. And my grandchildren call me Mimi. And I thought about getting some tags made that say Handmade by Mimi or Made with Love by Mimi, and I may do that. But I was thinking that on this pillow I could add a tag possibly I don't know if I'm going to or not but put a tag down in there like that of course I would think ask you what you think but by the time you give me an opinion this is going to be opened at the baby shower right <laughs> so okay now right side up right side facing What we're going to do after we sew these is we're going to lay these down like this. Okay, so take these over to your sewing machine and go about one eighth of an inch from your edge. Okay, just sew those down the line and come back here. And I'm back. Would you believe I ran out? I was <laughs> using pink thread on this and I ran out so I had to use white well I mean I could have switched and you know wound a bobbin up but I didn't plus I wanted to put my tag on so I had to actually make this by folding it in under because I don't have any that lay this way all of mine were made to go in a seam so all right lay your pillow right side up okay just like that I have to stop and think about this for a minute where my tag's going to go. But otherwise, so you're going to have right sides facing. And I go over with this edge more than halfway because we're going to be stuffing a pillow into it. So if you put it middle way, you, might, you could get it in there, but you might have a harder time to get it in there. Okay, so, I don't know, about two-thirds of the way. Let's go with that. And then this is going to overlap by at least three inches. You, I would probably go four, which is, say, four inches here. All right? Uh, I've heard of people going further, but I really can't. I have a hard time getting the pillow in if I go too far. I'm going to switch mine because of that tag to the opposite side. I want my tag to show on the outer part. Okay, so four inches or thereabouts. I'm going to pin this into place because I'm going to flip it over in a minute and trim it down a little bit before I sew. So I want to make sure that I pin both of those and at least once on the end. To hold it but we're gonna flip it and trim it here in just a minute and as you can see I don't use a lot of patterns I just do what I call wing it necessity and all that okay so I'm not going to get real technical And trim off some of the excess. Okay. I'm going to move my pins to this side. I like to sew from this side, being up. Uh, you can sew whichever way you're more comfortable. I'm taking the pins out from underneath because I don't want those to get caught in my machine. But I do want to pin especially where those folds are and the other thing is <clears throat> excuse me when you're sewing make sure that these don't fold under you know as you're going along just make sure of where you're you're sewing as you're going along 
you don't want those to get folded under because then you would have to go back and take out your stitches and we don't like to have to take out our stitches at least I don't I bet you don't either but we don't need to leave an opening because the opening is our flap so we're just going to sew all the way around and I am going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance now you could trim this out right like that right now I just don't happen to do that because I like to trim a little bit on the on the corners when I'm done so I'm just going to sew one quarter inch using a 2.0 stitch length and I'm going to go all the way around I'm going to back tack sew around and back tack okay let's both go do that let's see who gets done first so who won who sewed faster I bet you did <laughs> okay uh, you could trim this out in a few different ways you could use your rotary cutter and mat you could use pinking shears i'm going to just use my rotary cutter some scraps for postcards <laughs> almost done and I realize this tutorial is a bit long but I think it's totally worth the time that goes into it and I really didn't know how to edit it down I don't know what I could have left out of the tutorial because I wanted to be sure to show you everything that you would need in order to make it and there are it's always best to remember that there are people of every skill set watching the videos so there are people who know way more about sewing than i do there are people who know less than i do everywhere in between so i try to keep everything well explained so that everybody can understand what's going on now I'm trimming the corners. You don't want to get into your sewing line, but you don't want to leave your whole corner in there. All right, before we flip this right side out, we need to do one more thing. And again, I understand that a lot of you want measurements, but that's not something I can do with this because all of our pillows are going to be different. So first off, I'm going to square up this fabric. Let's see this piece of sheet. Because this is going to be the actual pillow. I have to move this a little bit over. so you have to yeah see I'm not good at cutting in that direction you have to remember that you're going to have to figure in your seam allowance and you always 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 want oops your pillow to be a bit larger or your yeah the actual pillow to be a bit larger than what it's going into and that's because then you can make them fluffy see I'm no good at this when I'm on camera because I'm trying to straddle the tripod I'm going to give this one more shot oh my iron's shutting off Oh boy, I'm close. All right. Because I, I actually like that. Actually, it will be all right once I get that filled because uh, 
this has this pillow has a seam or the pillow top has a seam allowance too. So. And I have it extending on this end about a quarter inch, so I'm going to give it a little more on this end, three quarters of an inch. So we're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this. What you want to do, I have a fold here that I don't have to sew. I'm going to sew around and I'm going to leave an opening enough for me to get some stuffing in there. But I'm going to back tack, sew, back tack, leave an opening, back tack, sew, back tack. And then come back and we're gonna fill it. We're almost done. Okay, I've sewn around, left my opening, and I'm going to flip this right side out. Oh, I did trim my two corners that needed it. This one I didn't sew the other way, so I because it was a fold, so I just left that there. Gonna drag Sally out, and make her work today. If you haven't met Sally, this is her. She has a little face there. She's just my turning tool made out of a dowel, sharpened with a pencil sharpener, and then dulled a little bit so she wasn't quite so pokey. All right. I, I took out my polyfill earlier, my stuffing for the pillow, and I had it. Just the bag was open and it was here in my sewing room and normally when I leave the room I close the door because I have a cat and her name is Jack and she gets pretty curious in my sewing room so I tend to not allow her in here unless I'm here to watch her and even then a lot of times she's not allowed. Let's just say that she is a busy girl. So, for her safety, and it is, a lot of times she irritates me because I'm in the middle of something and she gets into things, but a lot of times it's for her own safety because I've heard of cats eating pins, and believe me, she has really pulled out some pins. Okay, so if you noticed, I turned my edges down the same thickness of the seam allowance and that is because we're going to sew that shut after we stuff it. So for now, you're going to take your polyfill. I know over across the pond in Australia, you guys, I think you call it wadding, but either way, whatever you call it, you're going to stuff this in there. And I've heard of a lot of tricks and hints and all this and that, but I do know one thing. Take small pieces. It will not help you out to use large pieces and think you'll be done faster because it doesn't make for a neat pillow. The first thing I do is take my finger and push into the corner to make sure that I have my corners filled. And it will kind of work its way out as you're filling, but you, you just work that. Work your wadding in. And here we are. Our pillow is stuffed. I take my thread, one long piece, fold it in half. Take the loop end. Goodness. I think this is because I have fake fingernails that I can't feel my thread. I usually don't have a hard time. There we go. Okay, so pull the loop end down, leaving your strings hanging. You want enough so you can grab onto. You don't want it too short, so just make sure that you can grab onto it. Now I am going to uh, oh, look, did you see? Mine ripped just a little bit because I was stuffing my hand in there. But you know what? Nobody's going to know. 
Okay, so I'm going to make my stitches bigger than I might, just hopefully so you can see. Put your needle, pull your thread almost all the way through. And do you see that loop? Let's see, right there. Put your needle through the loop and slowly pull. There. Now you don't need a knot. I showed this technique in last week's video and I had quite a few people who had never seen them done that way and I love to teach new things oh I know what I was telling you I was telling you a few minutes ago about I had left my sewing room door open and I went downstairs I was talking to my husband and helping him out with something and Jack was nowhere to be seen and I thought hmm I wonder where Jack is well, Jack was in my sewing room into my bag of polyfill, my stuffing for the pillow. Well, she was having a great time because it was everywhere. <laughs> she had it strewn all apart. Because, you know, if you open up a bag, it will come out in little bits and pieces, <clears throat> like little chunks or wads of it. And <laughs> she had fun. So she had it around the room there. Okay, I'm going to pause this till I get over to the end because you can see what you're doing. I am at the end and I'm going to show you, in case you weren't with me the other day, how I end my sewing. So you go through, leave a little bit of a loop, go through once, go through twice, and pull slowly. Then I'm going to go over just a little bit and I'm going to do the exact same thing in through the hole and again slowly pull. Uh, there is another way to end this off if I can find my thread here. You can snip that or you can do this which is you go in and in the same place you were just sewing and push the needle out okay give it a little bit of a pull I know I have scissors here and then the thread end is lost in there and you don't have to worry about there being a knot on the top ready now although this is a longer video it certainly isn't a hard one it's, it's definitely not a difficult project to make but there are quite a few steps but the end result makes it totally worth the effort and I hope that you make one and you know if you aren't already a member I have a Facebook group called Marie's Scrappy Creations which I will link in the description box and quite a few of you are already members and I, and I love it because <laughs> Not only do we interact, but we get to see each other's projects. I get to see what you guys are making, and that is so exciting to me to see that. Uh, whether you're making something that I showed you or you're showing off something that you make, I love it all. I love it all. Scraps or not. Okay, so if you did this so that your pillow was a little bit larger, it's going to take a little bit of working it in there, but it's so worth it. Okay? And here again, I'm straddling a tripod, so I'm doing it a bit differently than I might. So you want this shoved all the way in. Oops. And there goes my iron saying, hello, I'm here. And I did forget about it, as I always do. My goodness, I'm just chucking you guys around here. I actually just received in the mail the other day an overhead, kind of like a, I guess you call it a boom arm, that is for filming overhead. And I definitely need that. But I need to figure out how it goes on the tripod. There's just so many things that I'm learning. Because when I thought about starting up a YouTube channel, I did not realize all that went into it. I can tell you that. 
Look at that. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? I bet yours is gorgeous. I can't wait to see the colors and the fabrics that you guys chose for your name pillows. And I want to hear, did you make it for your grandson? Did you make it for your daughter? Maybe your niece or your grandma? And you know, this would make a perfect Mother's Day gift if you put mom, which if I said that now, my mom watches my videos, so she would definitely know what I was making her for Mother's Day. But I do need to figure out what I'm making her because Mother's Day is coming right up. It's going to be on us before we know it. But you could certainly put mom or dad, any number of things. But isn't that sweet? So as you can see, you could totally take this off to be washed. And you've just created a pillow out of scraps. It's totally scrappy. The biggest pieces of fabric were for the backing and the pillow. Otherwise, and I mean, even those were scraps. So, and you know, I haven't given you a creative word of the day. And we're just going to go with green because green is on the E. It's right next to me. It's what I can think of. And we're going to go with the word green. So until Wednesday, I hope you have fun sewing. I hope you're safe. You take care. Dig into that scrap pile and, you know, throw it out there and just look at it and say, what can I do today? But I know what you can do. You can make a scrappy name pillow. All right. Until next time, you guys take care and thanks so much for hanging out with me. I love spending time with all of you. Take care. Bye-bye.